is actually our third try taking it because I keep laughing. Um, but this is my friend Suri. Um, we met in undergrad at the University of Melbourne. I've been really good friends for the last four or five years now. Um, and I thought it would be really good to have him on because I think a lot of the time students um, sort of play around the idea of whether or not you could um, sort of just wing the game set. And I think Suri really fits in this because he didn't really even um, plan to sit the game set. And he ended up actually um, getting into a school that required the game set. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit, Suri, first, um, welcome. And do you want to tell us a little bit about sort of your journey into medical school and why why you, why you even sat the game set when you had a guaranteed spot in med? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, like you mentioned, GAMSAT wasn't really sort of what I was planning to do initially when I started. Mm -hmm. um, I knew back in year 12 that I was interested in doing med, but like I wasn't 100% sure whether it would be right for me. So I thought doing a Bachelor of Biomedicine, it'd be like mm -hmm. a good entry point into the medical sciences so I could see like whether this is something that I like. And if I didn't like it, I could always go back to Sydney, which is where I live, um, and try something else. But as it turned out, yeah really enjoyed the subjects that we did, had some good times, some good crams, good cram. um, as you would know. Mm -hmm. um, and once third year rolled around, like I was pretty happy to stay in Melbourne. So mm -hmm. the way that my program would work is that as long as I passed all my subjects, um, yep. I'd get a sort of transition into Mel uh, med at Melbourne. Mm -hmm. But I, al I was also tossing up the idea of coming back to Sydney. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously if I wanted to go to the University of Sydney, which is where I'm doing my uh, degree at the moment, uh, I'd have to sit the GAMS at. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a really, really sort of last minute decision. And even before the actual GAMS set itself, I was wondering, like, I haven't done any prep, all these people around me mm -hmm. doing a lot of prep, like, maybe I should just pull out, save my money. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I spoke to some of my mates and they're like, you know what, just go ahead and do it, see mm -hmm. what happens. Um, and I went and did it. And luckily, it turned out pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, managed to get an interview at, uh, at UCID and did that interview and here we are. So bit of a bit yeah. of a weird journey, but uh, got there. Definitely. Anyway. Definitely. I remember I was, we were actually living together when you were tossing up. I remember you asking like, is the, is the, um, is it too late to pull out and get a refund? And then <laughs> this weird how life works, you ended up using that score to move back. Yeah. Um, and the main reason was family, hey, that you moved back yeah. to. Family, friends, and I was sort of thinking more like long term, it'd be good to, to live yeah. here in New South Wales. Um, mm. I was obviously completely fine staying in Melbourne, but uh, yeah. ideally I was thinking it'd be nice to come back to Sydney and yeah. thankfully things turned out pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and by the way, the, the program he was talking about was the, the Chancellor Scholars Program, where um, if you sort of get a really high ATAR and there, there's like some reserved spots where you don't really have to sit the standardised tests. Um, Yes, so Sudhi, what do you think, because a lot of students like myself would sit the game side, you know, in second year, third year, just to see if we can wing it because of stories like um, yourself, where people talk about, I didn't really study, but I got a really high score, or my mate didn't really study, I got a really high score. Um, but I think we had a discussion about this, and there's really m many more layers to it. I think mm -hmm. it wasn't just the fact that, you know, because, you know, I, ha I had at that point, put in maybe hundreds of hours into it. And then, you know, as you said, you haven't really done much prep, but I think it wasn't, it, I think luck had really little to do with it. I think it's probably more to do with things you've done in high school slash undergrad. Uh, I, th I thought it would be good to go through maybe each of the sections and you maybe, um, if you're happy with it, you can tell us your score and, and think a little bit about what you think would have led to that score because um, yeah, you sure. were also pretty consistent with the sections as well. You know, some people just ace section three, so they got like 90s, 100, um, and then fall back on one and two and end up getting a high score. Uh, mm -hmm. But yourself, um, I think, was able to get high consistently across the sections. I think students sitting it uh, this year or next year will find it really helpful if you could talk us through that. Should we start with yeah, sure. uh, section one? Section one, yeah. So it's section good. one, it was actually my lowest score out of all the three. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up getting a 69 in section one. Yeah. Um, and like, I personally think that section one, it's not like the easiest thing to prepare for. Um, obviously, in terms of like just doing heaps and heaps of questions, I don't think it, it sort of lends itself to that sort of preparation. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot that you can do to sort of get your brain mm -hmm. in the space of answering these sort of comprehension questions. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of the best things that you can do and something that I used to do as well, not necessarily just in preparation for GAMSAC, which is mm -hmm. sort of something that I was interested in, 
just read a lot of nonfiction, I'd say. Um, a lot of, yeah, nonfiction pieces, um, like sort of work where the stuff is a bit more analytical um, mm -hmm. and especially try and like see how quickly you can read through that, summarize the key concepts. Um, yep. So things like news articles or opinion pieces or editorials or even sort of like, you know, nonfiction books about stuff yep. like history, geography. Um, if you can read through those quickly and just sort of summarize the key points, um, yep. you're sort of getting your brain into a good space in terms of the sort of mm. questions that you're going to get in section one. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. fiction helps as well, since I think you do get some fiction yep. um, pieces in section one as well. And I think poetry, they can check poetry mm. in there as well. Cartoons. So, as well. Mm. Cartoons, yeah. So just um, like sort of consuming a lot of literary media. I would say, yep. is a really good... Like, and this doesn't have to be sort of short-term leading straight into the game. So this is more of a sort of exactly. gradual thing that you do a little bit every now and then for a long yep. period of time. So exactly. I think, that's I think of, that helped a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's the number one thing. I, I see a lot of students just start reading books for the game set and it just doesn't work. You know, you, mm -hmm. you can't read... You can't just read 100 books and get to the level of someone who's been reading all their life. Um, so I think that that's really good advice because you have, say, you know, three, four months, whatever you're preparing for it. Instead of reading a lot of books, what you could do is just read little analytical pieces, whether it be from the newspaper or um, some journal articles even. Because at the end of the day, they just want to see if you can sort of take out the main points from a piece and then mm -hmm. apply it. Um, and I think myself, I haven't been reading a lot um, growing up. Um, and... I think that really Im impacted, say, my vocab slash um, my, my, my skills of, say, as you said, um, speed, speed reading or um, keeping myself into a text um, and then syn synthesizing the points. So it's, did you just mute yourself? <laughs> yeah. So, Liz, Sorry, man. A bit, a bit of background noise going on. That's you didn't fine. want to ruin your uh, little dialogue there? Bro, um, yeah, no. It's good that you can even go out. We're in lockdown now. Um, but no, I was just saying that I think the fact that I haven't been reading was really impacted my section one score for three or four sits. And the final sit, I just read little pieces of text instead of trying to read books. Um, so I think that the point is, if if you are someone who's watching this and you've read a lot of books leading up to this, um, you're actually in a good position where you maybe don't have to put in that many hours in section one and, you know, wing it, um, as, the, as the youth say. Um, for section... <laughs> <laughs> All right, sec section two, um, section two where you write two essays. Um, How did you go in that? And same thing, what do you think led to that score? Yeah, section two is probably my best section. Um, I got 79 in section two. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously section two is where you write the two essays or yep. you know, those two little pieces um, based on the prompts that they give you. Um, and once again, like, I think this is something that you could practice theoretically. Yep. Um, especially under like time situations that would help a lot. Um, and it's sort of similar advice, I would say, like, I don't know exactly what they're looking for, but I find that um, it is good if you throw in sort of these complicated ideas or sort of complex concepts from uh, sort of like academic perspectives. So um, there was one particular book that I read. Um, and this, once again, this wasn't specifically for the game set. Like I, this was when I didn't even know that I wanted to do the game set. Mm -hmm. um, I read this book called Sapiens and it's sort of like this concise version of human history where um, the author takes a really sort of analytical approach to explaining how like things happened the way they did. Um, and if you just sort of uh, use books like that as sort of inspiration for some of the ideas that you write in your essays, I think that's something that I really like to see um, mm. Just show that you know you read widely and um, you take like a lot of different ideas on board. Yeah. Um, so definitely, once again, I think reading analytical pieces, books about mm -hmm. history, books about geography, stuff like that, um, yeah. they'll definitely give you like a lot of ideas that you can throw into your essays. Mm -hmm. um, and I was sort of lucky in that um, I sort of I'm, I'm not too bad with writing essays. Like that's something that I'm pretty comfortable with. And something that we had to do a lot in our syllabus in New South cool. Wales, we just had like a lot of essays that we had to pump out. I, I, I did want to add to that because I, because I did high school in WA where um, English doesn't have to be in your top four. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, you know, mo after moving um, countries, I was already like pretty bad at writing essays. Um, 
And I thought it, w- it wouldn't really be bang for my buck if I was trying to get my English skills up to scratch. Instead, you know, I focused on the sciences. Whereas yeah. if, if you do go to school in, say, Victoria or New South Wales, and maybe some of the other states, I'm not sure where English is compulsory, um, there's a big focus on writing essays. Um, it's likely you are already at an advantage for Section 2 as opposed to some of the, some of the other states. Um, and yeah, you toyed around with the, the term ideas as well. I think that's really important because some people think you have to know a lot about mm-hmm. the topic. That's so yeah. random, you know what I mean? Because the themes change every year and you can't be expected to know like stats about everything. That's just, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking to see if you can sort of put your opinion on a random mm-hmm. theme and, and just convey that. And I, I, that's what I did in my final sit as well. I just wrote like a really basic essay on parenting but I just tried to make sure that the point was getting across. Um, so whether or not w- at which position you are in terms of your journey, I think if you're like me, as opposed to Sudi, if you're like me, I think the, the, the best you can do now is to, is to work on your conveying skills and to write a really clear essay. Expression is very important, I'd say, for sure. Exactly. Like how think, you word things. That's something you can practice, I reckon, for sure. Yeah, I think that's the whole point of section two to see how you convey things. And obviously that's a big part of medicine as well to communications. Um, as opposed to if you, if you like Sudi and who, if you already enjoy writing essays, I think there's still potential for you to get those really high scores and work now on more sophisticated ideas. I think it's really hard to do both at the same time. Um, and if we just touch on section three now, um, before we talk a little bit about how this year is going for you, um, how'd you go for section three and what do you think worked and what didn't? So I got a um, 78, I think, for section three. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, like you mentioned before, luck didn't come into it. I reckon this is yeah. one place where luck did come into it. Um, okay, you reckon? Uh, I started the game set in March 2018. Uh, mm-hmm. And that particular game set, from what I was told by people who'd sat that one and the game sets that came before, mm-hmm. um, that the section three in March 2018 was a lot more sort of logic based and uh-huh. more like your puzzle solving and practical reasoning and stuff like that, as opposed to knowing the basics in like biology, uh-huh. chemistry, and physics that they talk about. Um, and obviously, that sort of lends itself more towards the approach of winging it rather than you know grounding grounding yourself in like first year bio, first year chem, yeah. year twelve physics, like what everyone recommends. Uh, I, I- so I might just quickly stop you there. Um, it's a really good point. I think that that GAMSAT you said was one of the pivot points. And I think mm-hmm. the really good news is since then, the GAMSAT has sort of stuck to that. Um, you know, now you don't even need basic science knowledge to solve these questions. All you need to do is sort of make logical connections. It's like a puzzle now. It's like mm-hmm. a puzzle in a science language. Exactly. Um, so, it, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the luck was that, that that's the GAMSAT you, you sat when it when mm-hmm. it sort of changed um yeah definitely lucky and uh, like i reckon that's the sort of section where given that it's all logic and puzzle based it's perfect for like doing lots of practice questions yep. so like you get practice questions from asa there are obviously other sources for yep. practice questions as well just mm-hmm. doing heaps of questions and like reading through the work solutions that's probably the best way to mm-hmm. prepare for section three just because of how like the whole thing has changed now yeah and I'm guessing you would say that you do enjoy these sort of puzzle-based questions. Like you said, the um, the UMAT back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's similar to abstract reasoning now, the GAMSAT, sort of. Like, it's more about patterns. Um, is that something you've always found yourself to found yourself to excel in? Um, more sort of pattern-based, logic-based things? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, it's it's the sort of thing where, like, maybe once you start initially, you're not, mm-hmm. you may not be that like that good at it, but once yeah. you've sort of had a look at a couple of questions and you've got used to the format and mm-hmm. the style in which they ask this sort of stuff, mm-hmm. I think it's definitely something that you can become comfortable with, with not too much of like preparation or not doing exactly. too many questions. So, exactly. Yeah. So I think it's definitely, some people think, you know, yeah, like some people are predisposed to being good at these skills. Like some people mm-hmm. could just be amazing at spatial reasoning. That's just how the brain works. But at the end of the day, you can work on those as well. So it's mm-hmm. not like For sure. if you're not bad at it, you're gone. Um, that's really good. I think I think if we summarize, like for section one, some of the good signs are if you've been you know, reading a lot on fiction, fiction, whatever. Um, section two, 
depending on your school curriculum and whether you have had to write essays or just enjoy writing essays, it's really, really good. And section three, again, if you've done tests similar to section three where you had to do more pattern-based things and you've found yourself to excel in it, it's very good chance you might be able to wing it, right? You might yeah. not have to do that many questions. Okay. Um, yeah, and for, uh, so what was your final score then at the end of um, the three seconds? So I think I had a, an overall score of 76. 76, um, yeah. And then with equal weighting, I think that dropped a little bit to like 75 point something. But yeah. uh, it, the unis like calculate uh, the scores in different ways, so. Exactly, depending on the state um, and the specific uni as well. And with that score, you know, you're basically guaranteed a sport, an interview at least in the, basically all the unis. Um, if you just need like a decent enough GPA. Um, and then obviously you got into University of Sydney. Um, I think you got into UQ and University of Melbourne as well. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, obviously chose Sydney. And I just wanted to know, you're in your um, second year now? Second? Yeah, second year. Yeah. So we'll go oh, reaching towards God. the end of second year now. Bro, how scary. Third and then yeah, third and fourth year, big change. So yeah, yeah. hospital. So that's something to look forward to. How's, um, how has COVID impacted um, this year? It's, it's been weird. So definitely yeah. like probably not the standard uh, medical yep. experience for sure. Um, but like me personally, I wasn't really too affected by it because yep. um, I, I sort of prefer watching all my lectures online anyway. Yep. Um, and we had to take a break from clinical. So we have once a week at uh, clinical school. We had to yep. take a break from that for about two months, but we're pretty much back into it now. We, we can't see patients, but we can just sort of practice exam and history mm. skills on each other and that's so good like enough. All in all, it's not been like too much of a of a disruption. It's people are asking me as well, and I think it's actually a good year. You know, look at the bright side to be a preclinical student because you can just yeah. study from home and get everything exactly. done. And I think in the hospitals, we're probably a bit of an inconvenience anyway. Just asking mm -hmm. random questions. So hundred percent introducing all the uh, virus <laughs> everywhere. Just, just the main vector. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Yeah, Thank you so period. much. Yeah, thank you so much, Suri, um, for your time. I think this will be really helpful right. for people. And if you're happy with it, um, feel free to email me or DM me questions and I'll, I can pass it on to you as well um, if people have any. Um, yeah, sure. Go for it. Otherwise, yeah, I hope, hope to see you sometime in the future. I'm not looking no good, but sometime. All right. Stay safe Thanks, in Melbourne, man. I'll have to. I right, see you, bro.